Hi guys, Kotutar here and my name is Anil Deshpande. So far in the discussion of Android data persistence, we have covered file I.O. shared preferences and SQLite database. Next obvious choice would be the implementation of the custom content provider. You should not be that much unfamiliar with content provider because it has been discussed as a part of content provider discussion previously in another video. The focus was mainly on the building the application which consumes a content provider. And now the focus will shift towards how to implement a content provider. So let us get started with it. So it's all about implementation of this content provider now. We will ignore the app 2 which consumes a content provider because that is not of much importance as of now in our current discussion. Before proceeding with the implementation of content provider, we need to be very clear about some of the aspects of the content provider. For example, is it always necessary to implement a content provider? Not necessarily. When it is necessary to implement a content provider? If you want to expose your data to other apps or you want a very complicated data copy functionality in your application or you are using some of the APIs like cursor loader, cursor adapter and abstract thread sync adapter, you need to use content provider. What kind of data does a content provider can expose? Pretty much anything. It can expose a database that is already present in your application, the files, audio, video, photos, JSON, XML and even the data that might be present on the remote cloud and you want to sync that data then also the content provider can be used. Then how do I get started with the implementation of the content provider? First thing first if you are using a database in your application you have to make sure that that particular database has primary keys. If it doesn't have the primary keys then the content provider wouldn't work and then you have to implement a class that extends a content provider and you have to define the proper content URIs to expose data set from a content provider. In our current discussion, we will be restricting ourselves only to two scenarios that is we want to expose app data to other apps and the data that we want to expose is from a database. Having made that clear, the very next important question is what is a content URI. If you have used a content resolver in any of your application to access a content provider, then you might have seen quite a number of usage of content URIs. So content URI is basically most important concept to access any data from a content provider. I am sure you would be wondering what is a content URI, what is its structure, how the content provider resolves a request that is based on a particular kind of content URI, does it refer to a table in the database or if not table then what does it refer to? These are all perfectly legitimate questions. So let us spend some time in understanding what this content URI is all about. Let's assume that we have a database and obviously that database will be having one or two tables. Now whenever a request comes from the content resolver to access any data set, the request might be either for completely a particular table or some of the columns of a particular table or it could be even a select statement which contains a combination of columns from two or more tables. Now depending upon which particular data request is being done using the content resolver, you have to define unique content URIs for accessing that particular data set. To put it simply, a content URI is nothing but a URI constant. It is using these URI constants you can resolve which particular kind of data needs to be exposed for a particular content URI. And URI contains three components, content, the next one is authority and finally the path. The content is nothing but content colon double slash string that's all. It is nothing more than that. The authority is typically the package name of the app and path is nothing but the user defined string constants. So in reality it would look like content colon double slash and then the package name of the application and then slash the user defined string which is being used to uniquely identify a particular data set that you want to expose through a particular content you I think we have enough understanding to get into a demo. But before actually going into a demo, I want to tell you what we will be doing in our demo. We will be reusing the application DB demo to do list, which we have implemented in our implementation of DB adapter, that is the discussion of the database implementation. We already have the database. It contains a table called as table to do and it has three columns, task ID, to do and place. Now it is all about implementation of content provider. Once the content provider is implemented, then the later part is implementation of another app to do client, which is going to consume the data from the content provider that we are going to implement in the DB 
demo to do list so let's have a look at the code this is the application that i have already implemented and if you observe our to do list db adapter is available here it is already implemented i won't be changing much here but the most important thing here is i have created another class called as to do provider and the to do provider extends the content provider class this is how you create a content provider by extending a class called as content provider and then we have to create a uri so i have created a authority constant which is the package name and then i have created few paths if i want to access the the lists that are present in the to do database i use this particular path and if i want to access the list from a particular place then i use this particular path if i want to access the total number of to dos that are there in the table then i use this particular path so these are three different paths which expose three different types of data sets that i am interested in and then i have to create the content uris if you observe i have three constants here content uri1 content uri2 content uri3 it contains three components one is the content the second part is authority which is defined here and then the third aspect is user defined constant which is basically a path and to create a uri you have to use uri dot parse and finally pass a combined string containing all three values and that is how you create these three uris but if you have observed the content uri one two three all these are not actually being used in the content provider itself these constants will be used by the content content resolver to send the request now it is all about when you get a request from the content resolver with this content uri how to map it and do the necessary operation to respond back with the appropriate data for that you need to use something called as uri matcher and implement various other methods of the content provider we shall see that in the next video that brings us to the end of this particular video don't forget to like comment share the video and subscribe to the channel take care bye